Okay, so some temporary things are good things, right? Like plastic forks and spoons. Yeah. Paper plates. Yeah. Vacation. Mm-hmm. Sun tans. Those are some good temporary things. But there are some temporary things that can be a little difficult to handle. You know, like um, someone who needs an organ transplant. And the temporary solution is uh, medicine or medical equipment to just keep them alive. You know, foster care, it's a temporary thing. That can be pretty difficult and bring a lot of burden at time. Well, today we're going to talk about temporary versus permanent things. Hi, I'm Shauna with Gollyhue Family Discipleship, and uh, every day my husband and I invite you into our home, and we ask you to do Bible study with us. This is just a way of discipling. This is how we disciple our family, and we hope that it helps you disciple yours. We're a licensed minister with the Church of God, and we love Jesus. Uh, we hope that that's evident with uh, how we come to you day by day with the Word of God. So, today we're going to start on 2 Corinthians chapter 5, and I'm actually going to read verses 1 through 5, so you follow along and listen with us. So, for we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, an eternal house in heaven not built by human hands. Meanwhile, we groan, longing to be clothed instead with our heavenly dwelling, because when we are clothed, we will not be found naked." For while we are in this tent, we groan and are burdened because we do not wish to be unclothed, but to be clothed instead with our heavenly dwelling. So that what is mortal may be swallowed up by life. Now, the one who has fashioned us for this very purpose is God, who has given us the spirit as a deposit, guaranteeing what is to come. So, um, the Apostle Paul is trying to prepare the Corinthian church to let them know, hey, all this stuff here, it's temporary, even your body. And I know it may be perishing. I know you may get sick. You may feel your arthritic pain in the morning. Um, this may, even this body that you're living in, it may even have some disabilities. You know, you may not be able to see clearly or hear clearly. You may not be able to walk like you once did, but... But I guarantee you, this thing is temporary. There is a building for you, a body for you, um, uh, that is not built by human hands. Then the one that fashioned this, he gave you the spirit, and not just any spirit, but the Holy Spirit as a deposit, guaranteeing you what is to come. Now, if you are a Christian, more than likely you have sat in a church or listened to someone minister and they talk about the glorified body. You know, we um, there's many scriptures that talk about what is to come and that God will give us a glorified body. What we see now, what we dwell in now is temporary. Um, and there are many scriptures that confirm that. Um, we long for that. That's what the scripture talks about. You know, we're burdened um, here. We're burdened with um, emotions, situations, disease. We're burdened um, with things. And it makes us long even more for that glorified body, even more for that eternal reward that this mortal body, the one that's guaranteed to fail us, to pass away, this one, we long for the life, the eternal life through Christ that we have. And um, we know that our spirit will live on for eternity. Somewhere, you know, we need to be secure knowing that it's heaven. And, and uh, the only way for that is through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He is the only way to the Father, the only way to eternal life. You know, when Pete and I registered for wedding gifts many, many years ago. We did not register for paper plates or plastic forks and spoons. Now, it's fine if you did that, but we wanted things that would last. You know, we wanted the good silverware. You know, we registered for um, pots and pans, stuff that was going to last us for years, and we registered uh, for, you know, dinner sets and for glasses and all those kind of things that we knew would furnish our house that would last for a long time. And many of those things, you know what, we still have. We still get to use on a daily basis, you know, 19 years later. Um, but 
my point being is that we all long for something that lasts um, and uh, even though we may enjoy these temporary things you know that we have here on earth um, there is something that causes us to long for things that are permanent uh, uh, my family has been in foster care for many years and uh, something that I can tell you from experience is many people don't do foster care simply for the fact that how can I welcome a child into my home and then some then fall in love with them and then they leave you know their life with me is temporary and, and I can tell you that's a very very difficult thing you just have to be confident in knowing I have given them love I have given them the best life that I possibly can while they are here um, but when there's a situation to where a foster child comes into your home and then one day someone says okay are you interested in adopting this child it doesn't look like they're going to return to their biological family and you're like oh, the burden is lifted oh there is permanency I don't have to worry about saying goodbye I don't have to worry whether this child will be fed or what's gonna happen to them because they're permanently going to be mine and I think about the burden of the temporary versus the relief of the permanent and that's what the Apostle Paul is talking about. Man, the burden of the temporary and the things that we endure, the worry, the doubt, the fear, the sickness, the disease, you know, we endure that temporarily here. But man, there's a reward on the other side, that permanency where there, there is security, there is hope, there is joy, there is a perfect love that casts out all fear. You know, and God is preparing for us something that is eternal, something that will last forever. Um, uh, there was, uh, I had someone in my life who had needed a heart transplant and uh, he had to wait on it. But while he waited, his heart just got weaker. So they gave him what they called an artificial heart and he carried around a little heart, you know, this little machine for a long time and uh god gave him a new heart actually now god has given him his glorified body but for a long time he patiently waited temporarily holding this artificial heart in hopes that he would receive something permanent and we have the hope this scripture tells us we have the hope that we're going to receive something permanent how amazing is that god is such a good god that he says you know what I'm going to give you something on deposit. I'm going to give you the Holy Spirit just to let you know what's coming. And it's an amazing thing how wonderful it is that we have the Holy Spirit to live on in on the inside of us, to be able to guide us, direct us, to bring us comfort, to give us peace, you know, and contentment, to give us understanding and discernment, even in troubled times. So I want to end this today by challenging you, challenging you to look toward the things that are permanent, to look toward the things that are eternal, not to focus on the temporary because you know what that's going to bring us? Burden, anxiety. Let's focus on what's eternal. Let's focus on what's eternal. God has given us a promise. He's given us a promise. Run with that promise. Live with that promise. No, no, there is so much hope in Christ. So as uh, we close today, I just want to remind you, read the scripture every day. This is a new chapter. Read this chapter. It's a great chapter. Uh, it will encourage you. It will convict you, but it will make you stronger. Um, but I want you to read this scripture every day. And um, so we want to remind you the E4, to exalt God, encounter God, edify yourself, and engage the world. But until next time, I love you. Keep living for eternity.